Hello, my darlings. Mother Raven here with another interesting little tale to tell you. This one by the wonderful Isaac Asimov, entitled Youth. There was a splatter of pebbles against the window, and the youngster stirred in his sleep. Another, and he was awake. He sat up stiffly in bed. Seconds passed while he interpreted his strange surroundings. He wasn't in his own home, of course. This was out in the country. It was colder than it should be, and there was green at the window. Slim! The call was hoarse, urgent whisper, and the youngster bounded to the open window. Slim wasn't his real name, but the new friend he had met the day before had needed only one look at his slight figure to say, you're Slim. He added, I'm Red. Red wasn't his real name either, but its appropriateness was obvious. They were friends instantly with the quick, unquestioning friendship of young ones, not quite in adolescence, before even the first stains of adulthood began to make their appearance. Slim cried, Hi, Red, and waved cheerfully, still blinking the sleep out of himself. Red kept to his croaking whisper, Quiet, you'll wake somebody. Slim noticed all at once that the sun scarcely topped the low hills in the east, that the shadows were long and soft, and the grass was wet. Slim said more softly, What's the matter? Red only waved for him to come out. Slim dressed quickly, gladly confining his morning wash to a momentary sprinkle of a little lukewarm water. He let the air dry the exposed portions of his body as he ran out. While bare skin grew wet against the dewy grass, Red said, You've got to be quiet. If Mom wakes up, or Dad, or your dad, or even any of the hands, then it'll be, Come on in, or you'll catch your death of a cold. He mimicked voice and tone faithfully, so that Slim laughed and thought that there had never been so funny a fellow as Red. Slim agreed. Do you come out here every day like this, Red? Real early? It's like the whole world is just yours, isn't it, Red? No one else around at all like that. He felt proud at being allowed entrance into this private world. Red stared at him sidelong. He said carelessly, I've been up for hours. Didn't you hear it last night? Hear what? Thunder. There was a thunderstorm? Slim had never slept through a thunderstorm. I guess not, but there was thunder. I heard it. And then I went to the window, and it wasn't raining. It was all stars, and the sky was getting sort of almost gray. You know what I mean? Slim had never seen it so, but he nodded. So I just thought I'd go out, said Red. They walked along the grassy side of the concrete road that split the panorama right down the middle, all the way down to where it vanished among the hills. It was so old that Red's father couldn't tell Red when it had been built. It didn't have a crack or a rough spot in it. Red said, Can you keep a secret? Sure, Red. What kind of secret? Just a secret. Maybe I'll tell you, and maybe I won't. I don't know yet. Red broke a long, supple stem from a fern they passed, methodically stripped it of its leaflets, and swung what was left whip fashion. For a moment, he was on a wild charger, which reared and champed under his iron control. Then he got tired, tossed the whip aside, and stowed the charger away in a corner of his imagination for future use. He said, there'll be a circus around. Slim said, that's no secret. I knew that. My dad told me even before we came here. That's not the secret. Fine secret. Ever see a circus? Oh, sure, you bet. Like it? Say, there isn't anything I like better. Red was watching out of the corner of his eyes again. Ever think you'd like to be with the circus? I mean, for good? Slim considered. I guess not. I think I'll be an astronomer like my dad. I think he wants me to be. Hmph, <laughs> astronomer, said Red. Slim felt the doors of the new private world closing on him and his astronomy became a thing of dead stars and black empty space. He said placatingly, a circus would be more fun. You're just saying that. 
No, I'm not. I mean it. Red grew argumentative. Suppose you had the chance to join the circus right now. Would you do it? I, I... See? Red affected scornful laughter. Slim was stung. I'd join up. Go on. Try me. Red whirled at him, strange and intense. You mean that? You want to go in with me? What do you mean? Slim stepped back a bit, surprised by the unexpected challenge. I've got something that can get us into the circus. Maybe someday we could even have a circus of our own. We could be the biggest circus fellows in the world. That's if you want to go in with me. Otherwise, I can just do it on my own. I just thought, let's give old Slim a chance. The world was strange and glamorous. And Slim said, sure thing, Red, I'm in. What is it, huh? Red, tell me, what is it? Figure it out. What's the most important thing in circuses? Slim thought desperately. He wanted to give the right answer. Finally, he said, acrobats? Holy smokes, I wouldn't go five steps to look at acrobats. I don't know then. Animals, that's what. What's the best sideshow? Where are the biggest crowds? Even in the main rings, the best acts are animal acts. There was no doubt in Red's voice. Do you think so? Everyone thinks so. You ask anyone. Anyway, I found animals this morning. Two of them. And you caught them? Sure, that's the secret. Are you telling? Of course not. Okay, I got them in the barn. You want to see them? They were almost at the barn. It's huge, open door black. Too black. They had been heading there all the time. Slim stopped in his tracks. He tried to make his words casual. Are they big? Would I have fooled with them if they weren't big? They can't hurt you. They're only about so long. I've got them in a cage. They were in the barn now, and Slim saw the large cage suspended from a hook in the roof. It was covered with stiff canvas. Red said, we used to have some bird in there or something. Anyway, they can't get away from there. Come on, let's go up to the loft. They clambered up the wooden stairs and Red hooked the cage towards them. Slim pointed and said, There's sort of a hole in the canvas. Red frowned. How'd that get there? He lifted the canvas, looked in, and said with relief, They're still there. The canvas appears to be burned, worried Slim. You want to look or don't you? Slim nodded slowly. He wasn't sure he wanted to. After all, they might be. But the canvas had been jerked off, and there they were. Two of them, the way Red said. They were small and sort of disgusting looking. The animals moved quickly as the canvas lifted and were on the side towards the youngsters. Red poked a cautious finger at them. Watch out, said Slim in agony. They don't hurt you, said Red. Ever see anything like them? No. Can't you see how a circus would jump at the chance to have these? Maybe they're too small for a circus. Red looked annoyed. He let go. The cage swung back and forth pendulum fashion. You're just trying to back out, aren't you? No, I'm not. It's just they're not too small. Don't worry. Right now, I've only got one worry. What's that? Well, I gotta keep him till the circus comes, don't I? I gotta figure out what to feed him in the meanwhile. The cage swung, and the little trapped creatures clung to its bars, gesturing at the youngsters with queer, quick motions, almost as though they were intelligent. Well, my darlings, that is part one of Youth by Isaac Asimov. It was written in 1952 for Space Science Fiction Magazine. And I'll have part two up at some point in time. So quoth this raven. And I will see you next time, my darlings, under the trees.